I always uh, uh, thought about uh, stars and the uh, universe and I questioned myself a lot about how life would be uh, outside of the earth and that was influenced a lot by my father who was a meteorologist and uh, I remember ever being small and um, since a young age uh, being really fascinated so I wanted to be an astronaut for quite a long time but at the same time I really enjoyed the ocean since I was very small so I think I always had this love between the ocean and the, and the space and I kept growing up with this love constantly and so finally I think by the time I chose to become an oceanographer uh, as far as I realized there were a field called satellite oceanography I was really fascinated by it and so I think I in some way I made the two um, the two fields of uh, expertise went combined in one way well, both space and ocean are remote. It's very complicated to take some measurements in the ocean as well as in the space. So you need some robust instrumentation. You need, uh, for example, you use the same titanic material that you use uh, to space uh, uh, exploration. Um, so it's, it's difficult until today. We still have uh, uh, a lot to discover in terms of the deep ocean. Uh, and in terms of space, of course, but also uh, some of the dynamics that you see in the oceans, for example, uh, rotation of the water, uh, we call eddies. Uh, you can see the same eddies in space, in planets. Uh, there are very well-known eddies in space. So it's, it's something that at the same time is different, but at the same time uh, you have a lot of similarities, I think. Usually the people work with satellite oceanography, they specialize in different fields. In my case, uh, I work more with what we call ocean color. That's what we're seeing right here. This is an image where we use uh, a visible range of electromagnetic radiation and we try to derive some property of the ocean. Uh, for example, in this case, we're looking at chlorophyll A, which is uh, a proxy uh, for phytoplankton biomass, that means for microorganisms. So whenever I have like uh, red colors, it means you have uh, a lot of chlorophyll in the water and that means they are more rich water. So it's one way we use to try to understand where the waters are rich. Uh, that's important even, for example, for fisheries, uh, but also for our research. Uh, but we also use data from, for example, sea surface temperature and that's important to understand a little bit about um, the thermal properties in the ocean and, and this information is very important, for example, for climate change studies, for understanding the main currents. We also use altimetry data for uh, mean currents, for example. And salinity, now it's a new, uh, actually, satellite that is very recent and that is providing some information about salinity. And so all of these informations are actually, nowadays, they are very commonly used if you work with oceanography because the satellites can provide a very, very good coverage of the ocean, which would be very difficult by using traditional ships. Although we need them still today, but it's uh, very expensive. They don't cover as much, it's more complicated. Uh, and with a satellite image, you can get a snapshot of uh, hundreds and thousands of kilometers in the ocean. Usually we say in terms of Earth observation fields, we define four major fields, which is ice, land, ocean and atmosphere. So all of these main components of the Earth system are now uh, um, being taken care, let's say, in terms of satellites. So, for example, the, uh, there was a previous ESA um, uh, program, it's called MESS. Nowadays it's being substituted by Copernicus and there are new satellites going up in space, Sentinel-1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. And these satellites are actually going to cover the whole Earth and their main purpose is actually to study uh, Earth dynamics uh, anywhere from, as I said, from ice uh, um, uh, to uh, ocean, atmosphere and land. So all the applications related with Earth observation are being taken care of by these new satellites. The Azores is considered uh, a strategic place in terms of location in the ocean. It is uh, located in the northeast Atlantic. 
uh, and so they were not in the previous in the past they were not a coverage some of the satellites that passed they were not actually covering this area so initially we installed in 2001 here and what we call an HRPT station from NASA and we are receiving some satellites American satellites here so we are processing the raw data and delivering a certain level we call a level 1a to NASA uh, every 15 days um, we are receiving but uh, nowadays it's, uh, it's fairly easy to obtain other types of satellites from uh, uh, European satellites to American satellites and we can process here. But we have uh, Santa Maria uh, in one of the islands, we have a major ESA satellite receiving station now that is also tracking satellites in the Atlantic Ocean, so it's extremely important. But when you think in terms of ocean, it's all totally, uh, the, the Azores are located also in a very uh, important area because they are a transition in the ocean that from very rich waters in the north to very poor, and we say oligotrophic waters in the south. And the Azores are right in the middle. They also the northern boundary of what we call the subtropical gyre. So uh, we have the influence from major ocean currents here, from the Gulf Stream to the Azores current to the south, North Atlantic current. And so it's a, it's a place where everything happens. We have very regular topography, but we have uh, uh, quite a large number of seamounts here, which are very important also uh, from hydrothermal vents. So we have uh, they are volcanic islands, and they are active and also on the deep floor. Uh, ocean floor. So in terms of um, for bio biodiversity studies, in terms of dynamics, ocean dynamics and circulation, is definitely what we consider a hot spot in the Atlantic. The girls uh, are usually uh, very good in sciences. Uh, my experience working with girls, they endure uh, sometimes a lot more uh, hardships, for example, from a cruise. I'll say some of the best people I had in the ocean, they were girls. Uh, and uh, so I think they don't have anything to prove, but basically they have to be stubborn. I don't think to be in science you need to be extremely intelligent, or, but you need to be stubborn. You need to, to feel the passion. And I would say that's the same for the girls and the men. But if a girl experiences some traumatic effect because of being a girl or because not being considered, I would just say don't think about it and just keep going on because you are good. And uh, so I think they shouldn't give up just because they experience some obstacles. But uh, as I said, I think nowadays it's getting better and better. Um, but still, you experience sometimes this, this uh, discrimination. And I would say just be strong, keep going on, because you're going to get uh, someplace. And uh, the most important for me is that if you really love it, and if you love science, uh, then you're going to do it. Mm -hmm.